Hello everyone. You know what I haven't done in a while? An episode of Gamer Life. I don't know why I haven't done one in a while, but it's been well over a month. Last time I did one, I believe I was playing Final Fantasy, and now I'm 43 episodes into my next Let's Play Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. I'm not even sure what episode or what number of Gamer Life we are up to at this point. I keep track, I watch all of them, but I have not participated in one in a while and I don't remember off the top of my head what level we're up to. The question proposed in this episode of Gamer Life was what series do you want to see come back? And that's a big question because I made a long list of stuff that I would love to see come back. And then I realized that talking about all of those would take forever. So I'm going to pick seven or eight in specific and talk about those games as ones that I really would love to see return in one form or another. My first choice is easy enough, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. We haven't seen an entry in this series since I believe 2004. It's been more than 10 years at least. The last entry was on the original Xbox. Both Knights of the Old Republic and Knights of the Old Republic 2 have a lot going for them. First of all, they're Star Wars games and there's a certain coolness that comes with being a Star Wars game. But there's a lot more to that, even without it being Star Wars, they would both be excellent RPGs, even if Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2 The Sith Lords wasn't quite finished. They both feature a large collection of excellent characters that are very well developed. They both have great stories. They both have great villains. It's just an excellent games all around. If you haven't played them, I would highly recommend them. And there's so much room to tell good stories within the Star Wars universe that making bringing this one back just makes sense. They smartly set these 4,000 years before the movies so that they could do whatever the hell they wanted and it would have little to no effect on the established lore from the three films. I don't care if it's Bioware or Obsidian that brings this one back. I just want this series back. It is excellent. They are fantastic RPGs and this generation of consoles could definitely use more great RPGs been kind of lacking in that so far. The second one on my list is System Shock. I believe the guy that proposed this question originally mentioned System Shock as well and I definitely agree. Bioshock has been a big deal throughout this past console generation with three games all of which had huge followings and a lot of fans. It's got a large established fan base but people seem to have completely forgotten about where it came from. System Shock and System Shock 2 is where it came from. And those games are excellent. Everything that was good about Bioshock, which I'm not a big Bioshock fan, but everything that was good about those is much better in System Shock. The storytelling is better. The setting is better. It's cyberpunk, and I prefer that to steampunk. That's personal preference. I think the horror atmosphere is better. Just everything. It's deeper. It is more challenging. And Shodan is one of the most memorable villains in video game history. Bring System Shock back. It's the perfect time since Bioshock has been such a huge deal this past generation. Bring us System Shock 3 and people will eat it up. My next pick is one that I think id Software is eventually going to get around to bringing back. Right now they're working on another Doom game for the first time since Doom 3, which was an excellent game by the way. But I would love to see a return of Quake. And I mean, it doesn't matter if it's the Quake 1 style or the Quake 2 style. I want an awesome single player campaign to play through and both Quake and Quake 2 had those. They're very different from each other in stylistically and the kind of atmosphere that they both have. But both of them are top-notch games. I've already let's play Quake 2 on this channel. So there's plenty of gameplay for you guys to go check out on this channel. There's 12 episodes I believe is how long it was. That's an awesome game. Quake was an awesome game. Quake 3 was an awesome game. Quake 4 was decent, but it didn't quite live up to Quake 2 and how good that game was and still is. But it was decent enough. I mean, it's Raven. They don't make bad games. Everything I've played by Raven is great. So I would love to see either Raven or id Software bring Quake back. They've done an excellent job with Wolfenstein. They're going to do an excellent job with Doom. Time to bring Quake back after that. Let's 
reach down into the PlayStation 2 library and pull out something a little bit more obscure. The Suffering, if you haven't heard of this game, it's a PlayStation 2 action horror game. A shooter that can be played from the first person or the third person. I prefer to play it from the first person because I'm a bigger fan of first person shooters and I think it controls a little bit better from the first person. But this game was awesome. Every single enemy in it was designed after some type of execution and that was really cool because it really let the developers stretch their creativity on what types of enemies you fought in this game. And they all had weird and creepy noises. I think my favorite was the one modeled after Lethal Injection. That was really, really cool. This series had a great story for it. And it did get a sequel, The Ties That Bind. And that was pretty good too. Didn't quite live up to the standards of the first one. But it was still pretty good. It was enjoyable. I would love to see The Suffering return. Give it to somebody who knows action well and knows horror well. Maybe you could give it to the team that did Alien Isolation or something. I imagine that they would be able to do something magical with it. And I would love to see this series return. The suffering was awesome. Dino Crisis. Capcom, if you're listening to me, you're sitting on money and you don't even know it. There are a lot of Dino Crisis fans. I know I'm not the only one. But we haven't seen a release in this series since the crappy game on the Xbox that got so far away from what the original Dino Crisis was about. But imagine playing Regina, the main character of Dino Crisis 1 and 2, in some kind of abandoned town or something where there aren't a lot of people, that is overrun with dinosaurs, and it controls like Resident Evil 4 with the ability to move and shoot. And it plays and has the atmosphere of a horror game. That is all you need to do to make a good Dino Crisis game, and it would be awesome. I would love that. Resident Evil 4 controls with the ability to move and shoot, and you're fighting dinosaurs instead of zombies? Possibly even more awesome than Resident Evil 4 if they do it right. And I love Resident Evil 4, as is proof by the fact that I've already Let's Played that game as well. And I would love to Let's Play Dino Crisis 1. It's awesome. I don't like contain controls very much, but it's awesome, and I think that this series does deserves to be brought to the next generation. I think there's a lot that could be done with it, and I think it could be amazing. Let's dig way back further into the vaults of obscure, kind of obscure video games, and let's talk about Secret of Evermore. There was only one game in this series. Back in the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis era, Squaresoft had set up a team called Square USA and they tasked them to develop a game that was similar to Secret of Mana. What we got was Secret of Evermore. And people ignored it because they thought that we got this game instead of Psych and Densetsu 3 or Secret of Mana 3. See, the game released in the United States as Secret of Mana was actually Secret of Mana 2. The Game Boy game's Final Fantasy Adventure was Secret of Mana 1. It was given the name Final Fantasy Adventure because they thought that that would attract more people to it and get more people to buy it. So there's a quick rundown on that. But Secret of Evermore was awesome. It had a fun action-oriented combat system. It had a really cool setting. The music was great. It's done by Jeremy Soul, who did the amazing Skyrim theme. That is Jeremy Soul. And he's got a lot of very good tracks on this game as well. Bring him back. Get him to do this game again. I'm sure he'll be uh, he'll be glad to return to it because I'm sure he really enjoyed this experience. It was his first game. Secret of Evermore was a hell of a lot of fun and you have the option of making it a co-op RPG if you want to because you constantly have a dog by your side in that game. If you make the sequel the exact same way, constantly have a dog with you, you'd have one person playing the human and one person playing the dog. It would give very different play styles and experiences to the two players so they could switch back and forth. Okay, I want to play the dog this time. Okay, I want to play the human this time. As long as they make playing as the dog fun. Now I've got one more game on my list, and that is Turok. Turok used to be an awesome series. The first two Turok games on the Nintendo 64 were great. They have not aged particularly well, largely because control schemes made a huge leap when we got to Red Faction on the PlayStation 2 with the dual thumbstick play. But for the time, it controlled pretty well. Still, the setting of Turok was cool. All the different weapons in Turok were awesome. It had one of the most memorable weapons in any video game that I've ever played called the Cerebral Boar. That was in Turok 2. The slug from the Cerebral Boar would bury itself in the skull of the enemy, dig down into it, and then you get all this matter spewing out of their skull 
and then their heads would explode. By far one of the goriest deaths I've ever seen in a video game, and it was awesome. But Turok, you get cool weapons, you play as an Indian guy, you get large open worlds to explore, and you fight a whole bunch of dinosaurs, as well as a bunch of cyborg dinosaurs. All you really need to do is get those combined and make a good shooter, and it will be awesome. Although I think they're a bit afraid because the last truck wasn't particularly well received, but that's because they tried to make Call of Duty with dinosaurs with it, and that just doesn't work. That wasn't what Turok was all about. It had a larger, more open world to explore that seems barren by today's standards, but it was really cool at the time. Large levels that have tons of collectible items and weapons and stuff like that. Turok had a ton of weapons, and they were all fun to use and experiment with. And it made it one of the more memorable first-person shooters of its age, especially by console standards. At the time, it was great. And I would love to see this series return to its former glory. I would love to see it be awesome and fun again. That's everything I've got on my list. There was a bunch more that I wrote down, but I don't want to drag this video on for way too long. So answer me this. What games and series do you want to see return? Do you agree with any of my picks? Do you disagree with any of my picks? Why or why not? Let me know down in the comment section below. It would be greatly appreciated. And thank you everybody for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe down below. That would be greatly appreciated as well. Please share this video. That would help me out a lot. And we'll talk to you next time. Thanks everybody and goodbye.